Boys and girls, I thought I'd give a quick run around on how I use the Fishman VST plugin within uh, Ableton Live and give you a few tips, pointers, bit of a demo. There's a, a good bit of info in here that I didn't know before I bought it, so hopefully it will enlighten you slightly. Um, I'm going to do two parts to this. The first one, I'm going to talk about the general plugin. Um, the second part, I'm going to do a bit more advanced um, control, which if you've got Live Suite, you can use your D-pad to select different instruments um, within Ableton Live if you're using it in a live setting. Um, and I'll show you that um, in the second part. But first I'll just begin by giving a quick run around on how I use it. So the first thing you have to do um, to make it work is if you open Preferences, um, in here, you do the Fishman Triple Play TV guitar. You've got to have the track turned on. If you open the Fishman Triple Play plugin and you don't have that turned on, you'll see all the notes flashing on it, but you won't get any sound out of it. So that's the first thing: is turn it on there. Um, here now, we've got a MIDI track, so we can load our Fishman Triple Play plugin VST into it. If you go to VST in your plugins, we drop that into our track here. Here at the moment, um, I've got no sounds loaded. So if we go Windows Patches, we can then go and choose something such as hardware guitar synth. That will then load that up. If you want to edit it at all, here if you double click on Contact here, this is the instrument we're playing. You could obviously choose this, you can go to orchestral, you can have strings, uh, all sorts of things and, and change what sound you've got. You've also got some uh, additional settings here. Um, if so, if you can go back to here, you can now play in your instrument how you normally would. So if I grab my guitar, uh, it's, it's not quite so up. I haven't got the pickup height adjusted very well on this guitar. It's not the one I normally use. Um, but it, it does track better than this if you've got it set up properly. So. So there's a few bits and pieces like that. You could have got full normal functionality that you would in here. Um, you can change sounds using your D-pad controller as you normally would. Um, if you want to record something, uh, I'll just let's turn off the counting. Um, if I just start recording something as you normally would. Jobs are good. And, um, yeah. It works just how Ableton normally does. You can see this, you can switch to um, that's what we just recorded. Um, if you go back here and close that down, obviously, if you go back to this track and you want to find your triple play plugin, click on the spanner. There it is. Um, so that's how it works. Uh, one thing to note that uh, about this is uh, the general Fishman standalone app runs in 32 bit which then will load any 32-bit plugins. Um, if you run it inside a digital audio workstation, such as Ableton, it will load it in whichever mode the DAW is running in. So Ableton Live 9, for example, is a 64-bit uh, app, and it only runs 64-bit plugins. Um, so one thing, because it, it only runs 64-bit plugins, it will open the Triple Play software as a 64-bit VST. Because it's a 64-bit VST, you can then only host 64-bit VSTs within the Triple Play VST. So you'll notice, if I go to the Patches menu, a load of these are red. Now the reason those are red in factory settings uh, is because these ones use Sample Tank XT. Uh, 2.5. Now Sample Tank uh, 2 is a 32-bit only device. Um, so none of these factory patches will work that are read that use Sample Tank XT2, which is a bit of a limitation that I didn't know before I got it. Um, if your DAW supports 32-bit, so it's Cubase and you can run it 32 or 64-bit, you can then force it to run in 32-bit in mode, then it will load the 32-bit VST plugin, then you get all of your plugins available. Um, one thing to note, if you're running 32-bit uh, plugin, sorry, um, 
you can only access up to four gigs of your computer memory. So if you've maxed it out with 16 gigs or however many gigs it will take, um, you will only be able to run, use four gigs of that if you're running your DOW in 32-bit. Alternatively, there are some bridge applications such as JBridge, but I, I tried a bit of an experiment with that. It didn't run very nicely. Didn't play nicely with um, with the Triple Play 32-bit plugin. So um, that's that's a general overview on running VSTs within the Triple Play software. Um, the other thing you can do is obviously this will only host VSTs. If you've got something like uh, Live 9 Suite, all of the live instruments, they're not VSTs. So you can't host them within the Triple Play. So one of the other things you can do is purely use the Triple Play um, receiver as just a basic MIDI device. Um, so on here, uh, if we get rid of the the triple play plugin, uh, oop, let's just delete that and um, get rid of this. Uh, what you could do is if you have if, the, if you play in MIDI instrument notes, you'll see I'm getting received MIDI signal here. So if I go and choose any instrument I fancy, let's take a piano. Now I get the control of this synth, so that means I can use the triple play to play any of the built-in Ableton instruments. Obviously, the volume control normally only works though in the Fishman triple play software. So, if for example I use my volume control on on the guitar, which I'm wiggling at the moment, nothing happens. Now you can't assign if I do command M to or, or MIDI map, if I select this and wiggle my wheel, nothing happens. I can't assign the wheel to the volume of that instrument. So if I'm running in this mode, I can't change patches, I can't select things uh, like that, and I can't adjust the volume. But what we can do is if we open the preferences again. Under Fishman Triple Play, you've got remote. If we turn remote on, the Triple Play will now also work as a remote control for Ableton. So if I now select, uh, sorry, go into MIDI Learn mode again, which you can click on MIDI or, as I say, Command M. Click on this now. Now, if I wiggle my volume control, you can see it's mapped. Um, so now, if we go back out of MIDI Learn mode, now my volume control adjusts the volume on here. So now. I can play my synth, but I can also turn it up and down. Um, so if you're doing live performance from within Ableton, uh, that's a, a good way of controlling your volume. Um, one thing you notice if I just go back to MIDI map mode, the moment max is set to 6 dBs. I don't want it to go that high, so I can change that to naught. Go out of MIDI learn mode, and now it just goes up to naught, so I've changed the input range for it. So that's the relatively simple run around on being able to use Ableton instruments. Oh yeah, again, obviously I can record things as I would. Um, I've now got these bits. I can make multiple uh, MIDI tracks. I can have them all set in. At the moment this will accept inputs from uh, keyboards and other things attached. If I just put it to MIDI triple play, um, then I can play this track with that. Um, and it, if it, if it's set to something else, um, then obviously it doesn't control it. So it will only play the triple play on the tracks that are set to this. Um, so that's basically a quick run around on the VST. As I said, you can't change different patches um, and automate between just changing different pianos within Ableton using this method. But I have worked out another method, how we can control those, um, which will come in part two of this video.
So I hope that's helpful. I'll see you in part two. If you've got uh, live suite and want to do patch changes, or or if you don't have live suite but you've got Max for Live, because the, the reason is you need a, a Max for Live plugin to do what I'll, I'll show you in that. So see you in part.